and welcome to episode 63 of Ready to Mosh. I'm Kev P, and with me is the apex to my opus, Gem G. Hello. Hello. Fancy one there. Oh, ah, little uh, reference. Topical. Yeah, very topical. And the topic today is? It's a guide to RIP camping at Download Festival. Yeah, we thought we'd do a special midweek episode. We've seen lots of questions banded about about RIP, so we just thought we would do a little a mini guide, I guess. Yeah, based on kind of like our experience and knowledge of RIP that we've done three times, is it? I think three, three or four. I can't few. remember. Oh, no. oh dear. Obviously, this comes with a huge caveat. This is based on previous experience and in traditional download style, two weeks and three days before the event, as we record. We haven't had any specific information about RIP. No. <laughs> if you are new to RIP, however, take note that you should get an email that's kind of like a welcome pack that will have all your information about what to do on arrival, what to expect, etc., what will be available to you throughout your stay. Sound like a holiday wrap. Yeah, so, so make sure you read that as well. Including things like which entrance to go to, sat-nav postcode to use and all of that. We're making an assumption that most of what we talk about will remain the same, but it comes with a big pinch of salt. Yes. A piece of salt. A piece of salt, as you once said. Yeah. yeah. So we'll start off first with the drive in. I suppose, as it were, the entrance to RIP. Yeah, how to get there. How to get there. And what to do. So the entrance is not actually the normal entrance that you'd use for download camping. It's actually a little further past or before, depending on which way you come in. Yeah. And I think we should just point out this point, depends what type of RIP you're doing. We are in Sleepy Hollow and there's Sleepy Hollow and Park Farm Camping, which has one entrance. If you're in any of the kind of pre-pitched stuff, then you will need to go to I think it's Metal Meadow Car Park, yeah. because you don't park next to your accommodation. You get the shuttle bus in, which we don't really know a lot about, so we're not really going to talk a lot about. So this is all mainly relevant. To Sleepy Hollow. In terms of the camping, but the general RIP facilities are applicable pretty much to all. So yeah. yeah, follow the signs RIP. It'll probably say Park Farm. Yeah. Or whatever, but obviously check your email and your postcode to use. So regardless of whether you're in Sleepy Hollow or Park Farm, you would go into the same entrance. So it's a driveway that takes you into where the Park Farm Hotel is, or Donington Park, the Park Farm, Park House Hotel. It's a proper hotel. You go in there and you generally split off into about four lanes Yeah. when you get there. In previous years, we have had the car checked by security, kind of. <laughs> yeah. In theory, they search the car. My car at the time was so small and so full that security guard laughed at us, opened the boot, oh, well, he fell out. Well, he fell out. He just gave him, yeah. up and said he was going to trust us. Last year, and I think at Pilot, that didn't happen. We just had the sniffer dogs. Yeah. So you have to switch your engine off so you don't poison the doggies while they come and sniff your car for any, anything Substances. that smells dodgy. <laughs> Explosives and all that. So it's quite nice. You get to sit there and watch some dogs doing work. And then you'll you'll be wafted through. This may take a while just to say at this point. So I would recommend a car snack or two. Yeah, definitely. Because there's only so many people. Although you split off into four lanes, then you go back into the one lane. And we've sat there for a good half hour to an hour before. Yeah. So, yeah, car snacks if you've not had a hearty breakfast before you set off. And then when you've gone through that bit, you'll be put back into the queue. They'll check your ticket. And then you'll basically turn right for Park Farm and left. You'll go over the road into Sleepy Hollow because Sleepy Hollow is over the road. So you drive into Sleepy Hollow. The stewards will guide you to the next available plot. It's done on first come first served as you arrive you park up they ask you how big your tent is they roughly mark that out so you'll then have enough room to put up your tent and then they guide the next car in so you've got a space that is your space space wise you're allowed 22 meters squared per person yeah which includes your car i've got no spatial awareness i just know that (laughs) my car our tent fits fine on that we've got a four person tent so that's all good. And then at that point, I mean, you can go and get your wristband first. We tend to pitch the tent up first and get yeah. that done. So they just leave you to it, pop your tent up, get yourself settled. And then there's a cabin, like a reception cabin, I guess. Yeah. You go and get your wristband. Yeah, go and collect your wristband. Usually very quick process. I think as well, do we? you both need ID, even though it's in one person's name? I can't remember. I know I've had to show ID when I've bought the tickets before. Yeah, I just feel like you bought the tickets for... No, actually, did I get them You last... bought them last time. That's why. I just remember having to run back to the car to get my ID. So, yeah, scan your email, show your ID as a ticket purchaser, and then you'll get your RIP wristband, and then you can go and finish setting your tent to pour, whatever you want to. 
So that's the ticketing process, and now we're going to talk about some of the uh, benefits of RIP. And the first thing we should uh, go over is that when you're in RIP, you actually get a goodie bag as well. Or a doggy bag. Or a doggy bag, yeah. So these do change every year. Some of the things have been really good. Some of the things have been real tap, but you still keep them. Souvenirs. Yeah. (laughs) Sponge hands. Sponge phone hands. Phone. So some of the things that we've had before include foam hands, socks. A metal drinks bottle. Which was actually really good, actually. Yeah, I still use mine. It's very tattered and bashed now because I'm clumsy. But one of those proper thermal, you can have hot, cold drinks in. Very handy. You always get a T-shirt, which is an exclusive RIP design on the front. Yeah, so it's completely different and you can't actually buy that from anywhere at download. No, probably on eBay after. <laughs> yeah, They'll possibly on somewhere. eBay, yeah. Anyway. I believe in past years there's been hoodies. Yeah, there's been hoodies. I think Zippo lighters. Yeah. One year. Toilet roll. Yeah. And last year was a, it was actually a, a bag that you could use and kind of like a laptop bag, I suppose. A laptop stroke. A rucksack. rucksack. Yeah, really handy. But yeah, we've used that a lot. Mm. And yeah. You also always get the official program and the lanyard with all the like you set times on and stuff yeah. that you can also purchase, but you don't need to because you get it included. And in terms of where you get your doggy bag from, this seemed to have changed last year. In previous years, we got it from the wristband reception hut. Yeah. And what you do is you just tell them what your T-shirt size is, they get you the relevant T-shirt and then the rest of your bag. Last year, we had to actually go over into kind of the, the foyer kind of communal area of Park Farm. Yeah. It was a big kind of truck. It was a big cabin, yeah. There to get it from. So that was slightly different. So we'll see what happens this year on that one. Mm -hmm. So some of the other benefits of RIP. The first one, one of the things that's really good and I make full use of is the clean showers and toilets that are pretty much available 24-7 subject to when they're being emptied. And they are, I mean, they are probably the cleanest toilets at Download I think I've ever used. Yeah, pretty much. Possibly slightly ropey first thing as you would expect anywhere. But on yeah. the whole, generally good. Always have your toilet roll in there. Yeah, and they're always filling it up with hand sanitizer as well. Mm. And yeah, the showers are always good, always yeah. work well. The showers are separate cubicles. They're a bit like what I call swimming pool showers, where you have a button that you press on the back and it comes out for, I don't know, 30 seconds or whatever. Yeah. And I think generally they've always been hot. Yeah, I, I don't think I've ever had a cold shower though. No. They're not the biggest of cubicles, but you've got enough room in there. There's usually hooks to hang your stuff on. Q-wise, as you'd imagine, there's like a peak time, probably nine o'clock onwards. Yeah, it, it kind of varies. Yeah, we try and go early just to avoid the queue. I think generally it's five, ten minutes if you're there fairly early. And I know some people go and have a shower at night instead, which they're obviously empty then generally. Yeah. So whatever suits you, or even the middle of the day when the bands are on, if there's no one you want to see. One of the things, and I think this is more for you, is the pamper hut. Yeah, there are, well, there were two sets of pamper huts in Sleepy Hollow in previous years. These are basically sheds and you've got kind of a, a dressing table set up in there. There's usually two, three mirrors. They do provide hair dryers and straighteners and there are plugs so you could take your own as well. Again, busy times, usually in the morning to get in there. I don't use them loads. I usually wash my hair once, maybe twice, and go and use the dryers. Then I might just pop in and straighten my fringe on other days. Sometimes you will find that some people actually go in there, take all their makeup and sit in front of the mirror for a long time. So sometimes you have to wait, which can be a bit annoying if you just want to straighten your fringe and you can't get in. But on the whole, they're definitely worth using if you want to. Then we've got the reception kind of desk, as it were that's open 24 hours if you've got any kind of questions or any problems. And that's always um, that's always available. So that's another kind of bonus that you wouldn't normally get on a on the normal campsite. No, you do get security wandering around up and down. So you do get increased security, which is, there's probably more of there than anywhere else, I would have thought. Yeah. Based on kind of people to... Ratio. People to security ratio. Yeah, I would say so. Also, just while we're mentioning the reception desk, I'm not sure if it's the most appropriate point, but I'll just say it anyway. That is where you can get bricks to put your disposable barbecue on. Yes. Because they like you to raise it off the ground. Although last year they looked very confused when I went up and asked for a brick. (laughs) They just hadn't got any at that point. So, But yeah, that's where you would normally do that so you don't damage the grass. 
Hello, this is Future Gem. I've just had a thought whilst editing. A question that we see asked a lot that we haven't covered in the episode is, can you take gas into our IP? And the answer to that is no. As with all campsites that download, you're not allowed to take gas. The only exception to that being if you're in a camper van and it's got a proper fitted setup for gas appliances. In terms of what we use for cooking, in addition to the disposable barbecues, we also have a little gel fuel stove that we use to boil the kettle. And another question that does get asked a lot is, can you take glass into our IP? As far as I'm aware, up to last year, you could do, as we keep saying, do check on the current information whether you can take it this year. Our preference is not to take any glass with us anyway. We just decant anything into plastic bottles such as spirits because it's less weight in the car and it also just reduces the risk of getting any broken glass either in your tent or surrounding areas because we are quite clumsy people. Yeah, you've also got a burger van as well that you can kind of get breakfast, you can get kind of bacon sandwiches and things like that and kind of burgers and stuff through the day i think yeah we generally used the one in sleepy hollow last year we had a couple of coffees from there we did have breakfast on sunday which was okay (laughs) it was okay but it was overpriced but you know you're a captive audience aren't you when you one van in a field yeah but each camping area kind of has i think like a dedicated one in there and then there's the main catering bit in park farm which we'll move on to yeah so we should probably move on to the park farm piece yeah. So there's a pub in Park Farm. And again, you can kind of get things like breakfast, dinner there, as well as drinks through the day. Yeah, it's literally a proper pub. So it is. Yeah, as you'd expect. Proper pints and proper food. I think daytime, I think they've had a hog roast previously, or there's been burgers yeah. and other stuff. And there's like a full on breakfast option that we have tried in previous years. In addition to that, there's also uh, an outdoor bar where you can get a real range of kind of ales, I suppose, which you don't get anywhere else. No, it's almost like a mini beer festival. Um, Based on last year, that was on mainly on the Wednesday and Thursday because it's like like a beer festival would be, I guess, when it's run out. Yeah. It's gone. We went Thursday night and they're very limited on what was actually left at that point. But definitely worth checking out if you want to get a good range of different drinks to try. There's also a mini kind of shop, so you don't have to go all the way over to the co-op. Yeah, to be fair, due to the site layout last year, the co-op wasn't that far away, particularly after we discovered a shortcut that you could actually go through. Yeah. Which helped a lot. But yeah, like a mini essentials shop. We'll say it is very overpriced. The co-op is generally quite reasonable. Yeah. But yeah, some of the prices there, unless you're actually desperate for something. Yeah, probably go to the co-op instead. (laughs) Yeah, again, captive audience. One little tip, though, is they do do tea and coffee, which was reasonable. Yeah. Can't remember, was it about two fifty three pounds a cup? Something like that. So, yeah, we collected a couple of those on our way back to the campsite at night. Yeah. You've also got entertainment in uh, Park Farm as well. So, entertainment-wise, you've got uh, the quiz, yep. which you have to register for, and it's, it's not something we've ever really done. No, you do register on that. It's already closed for this year, I believe, but you register through the actual download forum, through the download website. I think if you really want to join in, you can turn up at the time on the day because people may register and not turn up and they're quite strict on if you're not there on time, you're not, you're not in. in. And it starts at three o'clock on the Wednesday and you need to be there at 2.45 to register. So it is a very quick turnaround, assuming that if things don't open until the official time of 12, you know, to get yourself pitched up there and ready. Yeah. There's also karaoke, if you're that way inclined. Yeah, alternative karaoke has been confirmed, I think, every night in the Park Farm Barn pub Mm. area. So if you want some kind of late fun entertainment, if that's your thing. One of the other things you get is usually, obviously we're not 100% sure about this for this year, just because the amount of days has changed, but you get live band. Yeah, these have been really good in previous years. So they've been on, I think, from about 4 till about 11 on the Wednesday and Thursday. Bands that we've seen there before include Those Damn Crows, Lake Malice, As Everything Unfolds. There's usually about five or six a night, I think. Yeah, and yeah, so there's a kind of a small raised stage, kind of in a, it's, it's on kind of like hard ground, so you do need to be careful if you're planning on being in any pits or anything. You do get pits going occasionally. Yeah, it had actually moved last year, hadn't it? It was kind of off to the side, whereas previous years it was in the main courtyard, but yeah. I think they've redone the courtyard now, so I'm not sure where it might be. And it tends to be a mix of small upcoming bands that are just there to do the 
courtyard and then Bansil are also on in the main arena like those damn crows were and there's everything on fold so it's a good mix that you get and I think it's definitely a, one of the better added bonuses yeah oh yeah absolutely yeah obviously it's a smaller crowd as well so. you generally get a really good view although when we watched as everything unfolds last year it was heaving it was yeah so one of the other real benefits as well is guest area access yeah, so as part of your package, you automatically get to go to the guest area because you have to go through the guest area to, to get, get to the arena. the arena. Yeah. This is Future Gem again from the editing suite. The map for this year has just been released and it actually looks like you don't go through the guest area to get to the arena this time. So there's a separate entrance for our IP guests to go into the arena and then another entrance to go into the guest area and it's completely separated off. Also looks like you don't have food in the guest area this time, but there are some symbols to show that they might be outside. So obviously we'll see when we get there. And with the guest area, there's again a lot more benefits as well. So there's a, another bar you can use, which doesn't get as busy as the main bars. You've got lots of seating. Yeah, in there's, there. there's kind of benches, picnic benches out there. Can't always get a seat on them. There's also, I believe, some comfy seating near the bar that we missed out on, but I saw in a vlog. Mm. So you can check that out. And it's kind of an undercover area, and there's usually a DJ on by the bar. Yeah, and you get a range of food options that aren't available in the uh, main arena. Yeah, there's usually some really nice things in there. We've had some very nice mac and cheese in there. Yeah, very nice mac and cheese. Really good coffee in there as well, actually. Mm. And some very nice churros last year. Yeah. Again, you've got more toilets in there. And good toilets. And good toilets. Yes, actual proper toilets. One thing I will say about the toilets, they're kind of like a porter cabin. They've got proper flushes and proper sinks, but they're very small. I always remember just really struggling to get into the cubicles. They're not very wide. Yeah. But... They're definitely better than a portal, though. So. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, and if you're in the arena and you're on that side of it, it's worth the walk into the guest area rather than a portal, I would say. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And in previous years, and it may be the same this year, you do actually see some bands walk through. Yeah, the press area is actually at the back of the guest area, a little fenced off area. So you might see some bands being interviewed in there, or you might see them just wandering through the area to get to the arena themselves. Yeah, so people we've seen, and bear in mind this does include the pilot as well, uh, but we've seen bands like Anne Shikari in there. Loathe. Alien Weaponry. Those Down Crows. Skindred. Yeah, we saw Benji. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. So, Andy Copping. Yes, Mr. Copping himself. So you, you do get people in there as well, uh, just kind of milling around. So yeah. For want of a better. And it's just luck of timing, really, if you spot anyone, I guess, isn't it? Not yeah, exactly. Anything. Yeah. And then it's, I suppose, the biggest kind of benefit is the walk to the arena. Yeah, definitely shorter. It's a hell of a lot shorter. So we stay in Sleepy Hollow, which is kind of the furthest point away from the arena. I think so, although I think Park Farm Camp, and if you're at the far end of the field, is pretty similar. Yeah. And again, with Sleepy Hollow, it depends, obviously, where you're parked. Which part in the field you are. Yeah, yeah. obviously, the, the sooner you get there, the nearer the entrance you are, which means less walking. The first time we went in Sleepy Hollow, we were actually at the bottom of a hill. Yeah. Because there is a bit of a slope down in Sleepy Hollow, which was 2019, which was a bit of a brown load. Yeah. So climbing up that hill in the mud was not It's not ideal, no. But, you know, it is what it is, and it's still shorter than a good half hour, 40 minute walk from General Camp. Yeah, whereas last year we actually got a really good spot and we were a lot closer to the exit. If you've got any of the pre-pitched options, they're even nearer. So although they cost more, you, again, you do get that little added benefit of even less walking into the arena. Yeah. So again, kind of like with the walk, and I suppose it's, you know, it kind of ties into how you park and how you pitch your tent. You've not got that walk from the car park right to wherever your campsite is, whichever campsite you're staying in, and the, the trawl with all of your gear mm, that you're going to take. Yeah. So it's, it saves no end of time. So it's really quick. And the walk from Sleepy Hollow into the main arena is usually around. 10 minutes? Yeah, I would say so to main stage. Obviously, other stages are further away, so probably 15, 20 minutes to avalanche, maybe. Yeah. Depending on your speed of walking, obviously. Exactly, yeah. We're I mean, fairly quick walkers, depending on we, the weather. We could probably get to the main <laughs> stage in like five minutes, assuming you just breeze past mm. security. Well, I was going to say, you still get security checks. Yeah. As you would anywhere, they search your belongings, your person and all of that. Yeah, just make sure you're not carrying anything that you shouldn't be. And yeah, then you, you are pretty much to the right-hand side of the main stage, kind of near where the fun fair is. Yeah, near the big wheel, you come yeah. in that way. In the olden days where the wrestling was. Yeah, where the NXT tent used to be. Mm, yeah, you come in there. Yeah, so that is kind of like one of the biggest benefits because mm. you've not got that walk. So we've done the walk before and it is kind of like 25, 30 minutes to get through. And because there's more people, it takes longer to get through security. And not just in terms of like walking to the arena 
for once if you want to nip back because there's a couple of bands you don't want to see you've got a gap really easy to pop back to your tent chill have a drink yeah have a lie down again. yeah <laughs> and also i think the way that sleepy hollow is positioned it's almost behind the main stage so you can hear what's going on so I remember yeah. we went back to the tent before beefy cairo finished last year and we sat and listened to them for a bit didn't we yeah <laughs> And also you can hear band sound check in. And if there is someone you want to see and you've lost track of time, which often happens, yeah, you, you can tell when they're on the stage. And was it Volby I did that for? I think it was, year? yeah. I was like, oh, they're on stage. I remember just walking really quickly and, yeah, got there in time for about second or third song, I think. Yeah, so that kind of gives you an idea of how close you actually are. Just trying to think if anything else we've not mentioned. We mentioned lockers. You do have options of lockers. I know in previous years we had the old-fashioned ones where you could by your padlock. Yeah. And I think last year there were digital codes. I'm not sure if we actually had any of our own in Sleepy Hollow or if they're all just in the main area in Park Farm. Yeah, I think two years ago they were in Sleepy Hollow as well because mm. we use that. And with the lockers, obviously not only are they good for storing stuff that you want to keep safe, they've also got USB charging points. So if you've yeah. got portable chargers or if you've got phones or speakers or anything else that you want to charge, it's ideal for that. Yeah, I think what we tend to do is because we have portable chargers, we'll charge those up during the day and then go and collect them and then they're ready for if they're running out. Yeah. Just trying to think of any other top tips. Think of anything else, really. Same. Obviously, if there is anything you would like to know about camping in Sleepy Hollow or any other RIP bits, do pop us a message on Instagram. We're happy to answer any questions you've got. We're by no means experts. And like we said at the start, this could all be subject to change and could be completely different this year. But hopefully I would think they've kept most of the basics the same. Yeah. Apart from the stairs oh don't get us started on that bridge <laughs> we've also got a review of last year's download as well just to mention that's just reminding me so if you want to go back and listen to that we talk about the rap experience of 2022 that was last year wasn't it it was last year yeah, yeah. as well as all the bands we saw so yeah another source of information if you want to hear about that but yeah they did put a bridge over the road but you could year. still use the road they were just kind trying of. to discourage people from using it yeah we haven't actually mentioned that though so in theory if they not coming back to the bridge this year you do need to cross that road from sleepy hollow to get over to the park farm and then get into the arena they usually have a traffic light system there's usually security on it manning it to make sure you cross safely like little hedgehogs mm. so yeah i think that wraps this episode up then i hope you've enjoyed listening to it and hopefully it's been helpful if you're new to rip or even if you're a seasoned veteran seasoned veteran yeah and um, yeah so like i say just let us know if you've got any more questions if there's anything we've missed just let us know we can you know, share that in another format so yeah we'll be back in our next episode we'll have more of our build up to download episodes coming up where we'll be talking about the bands so don't forget if you're not already following us on instagram and twitter you can find us at ready to mosh cast and on facebook tiktok and youtube at ready to mosh do give us a share a five star rating on your preferred podcast platform and a review we would really like to hear a review as long as it's nice obviously <laughs> and yeah we'll be back next time stop the hammering moog <laughs>